All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of Global Entrepreneur. I am here today with Joe. I met her at the Startup Grind Conference in Silicon Valley, and she's the founder and CEO of Menudo app. So, Joe, why don't you start telling us a little bit more about yourself uh, and, and your story as an entrepreneur? Hi, everyone. Um, nice to see you again, Pablo. I, um, I moved to Spain um, from Belfast, Northern Ireland, when I was in my 20s. And I spent the first 15 years in Spain um, working in local pubs and restaurants. I built up a really good business and had quite a, I, I employed about 50 people in my, my last restaurant bar venue. Um, I had an, the idea for my new Del Dia app because in the winter in Ibiza, Spain, um, it shuts down, there's no tourists and you spend a lot of time eating out with your friends. Um, it's just part of what you, a daily life. You'll decide where to go for lunch or dinner, meet up. Um, there's a tradition in Spain called Menu del Dia, which each restaurant puts on a three-course meal for a reduced price to try and entice the locals into the restaurant. Um, and me and my friends were always trying to decide where to eat. We're trying to figure out who had paella one day and who was doing say chicken and chips on a Tuesday afternoon and stuff like that. Um, so I had the idea to make a small app just for me and my friends um, so that the, we could see what restaurants were serving which menus on each day. It began like that. I, I, I managed to get a small app on the app stores by using Google and YouTube and using a framework. I developed a small app. It had absolutely no function at all. Other than the fact is I used to upload menus to it and my friends used to be able to view them. And that was, um, that was the original plan for the app. So it worked well um, for what we needed it to do. Um, the app just kept growing through word of mouth. Ibiza is a tiny island and it, it got over 160,000 app launches within a few months. Um, it actually turned out as well that I had to take a year off work due to a traffic accident and I was sort of in the house with a lot of time on my hands. Um, I decided to apply to a tech conference that I'd always wanted to go and see. I thought, well, this is a perfect chance to get in the door here because I actually have something um, to do with tech. Uh, um, so I applied for a conference called Web Summit, which is held in Europe every year. There's about 80,000 people go to it. And after a few months of the application process, I managed to get invited as a, a startup to exhibit in Web Summit, which was quite a shock because I really only wanted to go and have a look around and see what, you know, just see other things and ideas and robots and stuff like that. So it was a shock to get invited to actually exhibit myself. So um, after the first exhibit at Web Summit and speaking to people in tech, I realized my idea was, um, it was very good and I should um, continue on with that. By this stage, it had already spread into three more cities in Spain. So it had left Ibiza and it had, it had, I had launched in Mallorca, Barcelona and Madrid. But it was the same app, just um, carbon copy of it. So it had no function again. It just repeated itself. One was for Ibiza, one was for Barcelona, one was for Mallorca. And it had the same concept. I got the restaurant menus that they had on that day and I uploaded them in the morning so the locals could see it. The app just grew from there, really. And after going to Web Summit, I realized that I should spend some time and a bit of money and some thought into it and give it a bit more function. And I mean, at the beginning, you couldn't even book the restaurant or, you know, you couldn't do anything but look for the menus. So the second version of the app was launched in, I think it was December 2018. Now this combined all the four apps that we originally had, Barcelona, Madrid, Ibiza, where we started, and Mallorca. It put them all together and it added more function to the app that like you could call the restaurant. Um, you could 
online booking, just simple stuff like that. But they, they, this stuff it didn't have previous. Um, so it was a big upgrade for me. Um, that app, it, it just kept growing. I was recovering surgery and I sort of let it grow itself. I didn't have much time for it as I was doing a lot of physiotherapy and stuff. But I kept it going. I kept it, I kept the daily updates going and I, I kept going with it. Um, I started to notice um, it growing outside of Spain. So the people that were using it in Spain, for example, the beta shuts down in the winter and people go back to Holland or to Europe or to the UK. And they were continuing to use the app when they were in countries that wasn't even listed on the app. So that, um, that made me um, test it outside of Spain. Now, Menu Del Dia is a big Spanish tradition. I think it's the same in some South American countries as well. But I didn't think, even though people were using it outside of Spain, I didn't think they'd understand the concept out of, outside of Spain. So I rebranded it and called it Fin News with Menus. Mm -hmm. And I launched the UK um, version of this. Um, I launched it um, just for a few months, just to test the water. And it got, again, 150,000 app launches without any um, marketing. Um, in January 2019, I think it was, I decided to take the step and combine both apps. Rather than have one app for Spain and one app for other places in Europe, I decided just to take the leap, um, stick with my original plan, which was my new Del Dia concept, um, stick with the original branding, and I, I added, I combined both, both apps. So Venues with Menus was joined on to Menu Del Dia. By then we'd also launched in Holland, um, I think we were in about 12 countries by then. Um, so the, the, the new version of the app, which was launched in January 2019, had 12 countries on it. Um, the app continued to grow without any marketing, money spent on marketing. It just continued to grow. Um, by July, we were in Brazil. We had an office in Brazil. We had launched in Brazil. We were starting to get interest with people not Americans but people visiting America that were used to using the app so we started to add some places that were popular in America like New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles not because we thought that it was going to be a big hit with the Americans but because our app users were traveling and wherever they traveled they checked the app so we just we I, I spend a lot of time um, studying the back office. Every day I look to see where there's more users, where there's a consistent number of users. And if that carries on for three to six months, I add them to the app. So, for example, we're looking at adding Colombia next, um, Croatia, and there's a few other hotspots that we want to get on it. At the minute, prior to the COVID um, shutdown, we were in 20 countries, but we had app users in 47 countries every day. So there's still a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of growing to be done, but we're just, I'm just taking it um, day by day, day. You know, at the minute I'm concentrating more on um, the doors that opened for me um, from the Silicon Valley trip. As you know, we got invited by Google to exhibit in February prior to the uh, travel restrictions. Um, it was a big honor to be part of Google for Startups and exhibiting as one of their startups at their global event. So we, it, it opened a lot of doors for me. And um, to be honest, this pause in, in um, because of the COVID restrictions has done me a bit of a favor because I've got a bit of time to, you know, take a bit of a, breath and think, you know, oh, I can't believe this has gone so far because the, the last two years you've just been, it's just been growing and I've been, you know, having to chase it, you know, it's been growing and I've been keeping up with the growth, but it's been nice to just sit back and realize how far we've actually got with that and, you know, 
the what we're going to start planning what we're going to do after the the restrictions are lifted rather than um just going with that you know actually say well you know that's a good that this is a good option that's a good option you know and have a bit of time just to do catch up on normal things with it rather than um the, the speed that it was growing was you just didn't have time to to think a lot about it. You just had to keep going with it. So it's it's been it's been a nice few weeks to just to look back on the journey and 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 think about what we're going to do next and how we're going to do it rather than just um, basically wing it every day. You got up, you know. You just you know you got people people in. Brazil wanting on the app, you were putting them on straight away and you know it was just it's it's nice to get a bit of a breather for a couple of weeks. And and how many users did you have at its peak before all uh, this situation well, right now? The way I built the app, I didn't just go for the app stores. I um I built it as a web app as well. Mm -hmm. So downloaded from the app stores in the app stores we had about 10,000 downloads which isn't a lot but considering we hadn't done a marketing campaign it's not too bad it's pretty good but, but a lot of our users use it through the web app because for example you can go on the Facebook page and hit use app and the app comes up or you can type, type in I have a number of URLs that make it easy to use for example menu app, they get the app so a lot of people use it through the web app and not through um, downloading it. Um, what I do is I count how many times the app is actually used because that gives me the, the whole picture rather than the downloads from the app stores. So prior to um, the shutdown, this version of the app was used 650,000 times. Wow. So we have an average, we, we, we have a, a consistent, we have a two year history of consistent number of users every day. Um, we don't seem to lose people, you know, we, we, I, even now uh, during this um, crisis, we're still getting new downloads every day. Um, there's been one day um, that I haven't had a new download, which isn't bad considering what's happening, you know. Um, I mean, all restaurants are shut, so there's absolutely um, no reason for people to be going on the app, but they seem to be still doing that. Um, and what I found was um, helpful um, during this time was, um, for example, in Ibiza, um, apps like Just Eat and Herber Eats don't really exist over here that much. We have Just Eat, but um, you know, when I last clicked on it, there was four restaurants. So what I did was with, with my new Del Dia app, I just quickly changed it about a bit. So on my local island, um, you can look for who's serving takeaway food, um, sorry, delivery options for here. And a few other big cities that were popular in, like Liverpool in the UK, Belfast, where I am, I'm originally from. I've got a good following there, so the, well, the app has. So I just I, I didn't want to ruin the whole app or or try to compete with apps that are already doing that. This was solely just to provide a service for my users while while we're all in lockdown in Spain. So. Um, it, it's doing quite well with that and it's been mentioned in the local press and government websites and stuff for the island so um, and I plan to um, just to help the restaurants recover I plan to run 2020 for free on the app so anybody can be listed when they get to reopen um, just to give the, a bit of a helping hand to, to, to restart the economy um no no restaurants will have to pay to be listed in 2020 and that will be worldwide um so we're just going to try and um try and help them out and give them a bit of support when the time comes awesome and then so you told me the story that you actually taught yourself how to code and how to develop the app can you tell me a little bit more about that process how, yeah. how is that before um, I actually make myself sound really good, the app repeats itself. So you get one page right, and basically you have to copy and paste that for anything else you want to do. If I'm adding a new city, a new country, a new um, 
restaurant, it's basically the same cold juice. There's not much cold in it. So I didn't have much code to teach myself, to be honest. I, I used the framework um, to build the app and it worked really well. Um, and once I got Ibiza working and looking good, then it was just basically a matter of copying and pasting a lot to get uh, and changing the images, obviously. So instead of an image for Ibiza, it would be Barcelona or Madrid. So there wasn't a, a lot after the initial um, setting up of the first page and app, it was quite easy to, to code up because, you know, as I say, it just repeats itself over and over again. Every new country and every new venue is the same code and the same framework. So it was easy for me. So it's not like I've taught myself um, to, I've taught myself to build my app um, and it works well. But um, I couldn't open an office tomorrow as an app developer, building other people's apps, if you know what I mean. I just learned what I needed to learn to build the app that I wanted. So I don't want to take anything from uh, app developers who, who have studied and, and you know, are work 24-7 to get... To, I mean, my app, it, it took me three weeks to get the new version on from start to finish under the app stores. I mean, the quotes I was getting from app developers was six months, 21,000. Yeah. You know, that's the cheapest quote I got. So I managed to do mine. I think it was actually, I'd done it over the Christmas and New Year periods because most of the restaurants weren't showing menus then. Um, and I'd done it in 10 days or something like that from start to finish. But, I mean, that was a lot, a lot of late nights. And, as I say, it's only now that I'm happy with the app development. I've, I've added to it. I've added features. I've added filters. I've, uh, I've improved in the design over the past two years. So even though it initially only got me a couple of weeks to get it onto the app stores, I've spent two years before I, I'm, I'm, I'm only ready now to push it out into market. Uh, um, I'm, re I'm, I'm happy with it now. I'm happy with the, the user feedback, with the design and how it works. So it did, took me a couple of weeks to get it onto the app stores, but it took me until now to be happy with it and, and get it the way I want it and to be able to market it. And then, so my question is, you know, you've mentioned that obviously this app is, is, you know, has a lot of potential in Spain because culturally people tend to use uh, or tend to look for, uh, you know, which menus are offered during the day at a discount price. How do you think that's going to translate to other countries or what has been your experience well, there? Well, what I thought was, I noticed I actually went around Europe um, in the winter. Um, I'm a big football fan mm -hmm. um, and my team was lucky that we were in um, a competition that traveled around Europe called the Champions League. So I went to um, the cities that I wanted, that I considered that might be good for the app when my football team was playing in them cities. So I, I balanced out a bit of life with a bit of um, app development. And I went to cities like, for example, in Paris. Paris does a similar thing to Menu Del Dia called Plat du Jour, which is the same. It's, it's, it's basically the same, only it's Plat du Jour, plate of the day. So if you are on the app in Paris, it's not Menu Del Dia, it's Plat du Jour. Um, for example, in London, you can get pre-theater meals. Um, I put things on like um, afternoon tea in the UK. The, the filters are different in each country. So, for example, in the US, the filters would be things like happy hour, brunch options, um, steakhouses, stuff like that. In Ibiza, it's menu del dia. We've also um, widened the concept in Spain so you can have not just menu del dia, but you can look for business lunches, you can look for brunch options, you can you can go um, where, where there's children's meals, if you want to eat beside the sea, there's a filter that's beside the sea. Um, so we, it, as the app got bigger, our concept grew as well. So go on, we still stick with menu del dia, where you can go on and you can find the best menu del dias in Spain. But you can also find the best brunches or the best um, evening meals or the best Michelin star restaurants. 
And, and you... because of these changes, every, every city we're in, there's a similar thing. And, and so you've told me that this initially started sort of as, a, as an idea to, to show it to your friends and to, you know, just join some local restaurants. When did you decide to uh, go full time? Um, after the Fizz at the Web Summer, um, when I was put in front of the likes of Amazon, um, I also had a sit-down meeting with a guy called Larry Kim, who um, had, he's head of a company called Mobile Monkey. I think he sold a big company called Word Search. Um, and they, they sold their companies for millions and they, billions, in fact, and they're sitting telling me that I had a great idea. I spoke with somebody from Amazon Web Services. I had a sit down chat with them. The response I got from people coming to my booth when at my first visit the Web Summer, I was just like, I have to go with this. You know, I, this is... This isn't just for me and my mates. This is going to go, you know, it's going to go worldwide if I, if I spend time on it. And it just, it, you know, I always, had, I always knew it was a good idea, but I was 100% committed to my old company. Um, so that's why the first three years of the app, there was, it, it, it just stayed as it was, um, just for me and my mates. Um, I was fully committed to my other business. Um, that changed in 2018, um, just due to me having to take time out um, because of a traffic accident and I had a repair done on my leg and I wasn't allowed to basically walk too much for over a year. So um, it just made me realize that the company could survive without me, you know, and, you know, that they would be okay if I did leave. Um, and, you know, I just seen the opportunity as, you know, to, to, to go with my gut instinct and, and push for the app. I mean, I left, I didn't leave the business in the lurch. I, I left a very big, um, team behind me that were more than capable of doing doing the work that I used to do so it was an easy you know the business doesn't didn't suffer from me leaving it wasn't like you know I I said right that's it you know I I, I left them in a very very good position and it still is carrying on to this day with it with the team that I put in place so um I just it just came at the right time for me and I knew I knew the app had great potential and I just decided to go for it and put, put all my money into it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um and so what what are your what are your next steps with Menoodle Dia? What are you gonna do after you know all of this situation is over, uh this coronavirus situation? What are your next steps? What what do you want to achieve? We were quite lucky that we got to Silicon Valley just before the shutdown. Um, it was a great, great experience to be there. Um, I actually didn't expect to get much out of it, apart from the fact that I got there. I thought it was great to, to build something and to be invited to Silicon Valley with it, and that was good enough for me. But I actually met a lot of people in the tech industry that are very interested in the app and interested in helping me grow the app around the world. Mm -hmm. So at the minute, I'm just spending time. Um, that's like a whole new um, sort of job in itself because, you know, you, you, you're talking with venture capitalists. You're, you're in acceleration groups. I'm very lucky that I met up with... Um, the Change in Tides movement, it's called, and it's run by a lady called Jen LeBlanc, and she's a best-selling novelist in Silicon Valley. She's really, really highly respected over there, and she's one of the mentors that I have now to guide me through the, the next part of the journey. So I'm, I'm just really thankful that I got to that stage before it all stopped, because maybe I'd have been thinking differently now, you know, maybe I wouldn't have seen that, you know, this was just a pause and it was time to catch up on all the wee jobs that I didn't get time for before. Maybe I'd have been thinking of, you know, was this the end of the road of this journey that I've been on? But, you know, I totally don't feel that way at all. Um, 
so now we're, we're actually will be uh, looking, we're getting funding to take the app to the next level because it's been, it's basically been financed by me and two friends have helped me along. Um, I did get offers of investment due to Web Summit, but um, I, I turned them down because I, I wasn't experienced enough at the time and I didn't, um, I just didn't, you know, gut feeling, it did, just didn't feel right to let somebody, st a stranger, take part of my company and take some control over it. I hadn't actually got the control off it myself at the time. I was still learning as I was going. So until I felt in fully control with the company, I, I didn't want to let any of it go to anybody else. So I have received funding from two very good friends that I that I trust a hundred percent and they've helped me get to this stage. So now um we we have the help of the, the change in tides movement and we're we're starting to look for investment to to start marketing the app because i mean it's reached six hundred and fifty thousand app launches and we've never we haven't spent any money on advertising yet so you can just imagine what we can do with a bit of money behind us so that's the next step for us and that's what we're working on at the minute so it's um it's it's quite exciting to be to be part of it. i mean I have a 2 a.m. meeting tonight in San Francisco. Um, so a lot of my friends are in lockdown going, are you bored? And I'm like, I'm not bored at all. I have a million things to do, you know. And um, when I when I want to take a bit of time out from, from the app, I've been painting the house. And so we were, um, I think, on day 35 or something where we haven't been allowed to leave the house. So I've, I've, I've got pretty much organized which is which has been great awesome and uh what um what are some tips you would give to people who want to start their own companies their own apps and who want to become entrepreneurs what are well, three tips you first, firstly i would say um spend a lot of time reading and learning what you can i mean there's so much information out there that you can read and you can learn from it's unbelievable um the, the people that are trying to do new things now have got it so easy because you've got you've got your google you've got your amazon you've got you can you've got loads of online courses that you can learn from um ask somebody who's a bit further on the journey than you you know i i would have no problem with people contacting me and asking me some questions because um, I have got a bit further down the line than people that are just starting out. Um, getting your app on the App Store is the first hurdle. And once you get through that, um, you just have to build on what you, what you do and stick with your gut instinct. Don't look at competition. I never look. If, I, if people say to me, there's an app that does this and there's an app that does that, I have no interest in it at all because I just want to... Unless I run out of ideas for my app, I'm, you know, I'm quite happy just to keep going with my own thoughts and my own ideas. Because if you spend time watching what other people are doing, I was the same. I was the same when I run a bar restaurant. There was two Scottish bars in town and I was never interested in what the other Scottish bar did. I was just interested in what I was doing and my staff and it worked very well. And I'm the same with the app. I just stick to what I want to do. And, you know, don't pay too much attention to what other similar people are doing or similar apps are doing. Go your own way. Stay in your own lane and just keep going. Yeah, 100%. That's great. Um, and so just to wrap it up, because, you know, um, it's, uh, I, I have a, a meeting next. What are some final thoughts or comments that you would have uh, regarding all of the journey that you've lived? It's been fantastic. And I feel if it ended tomorrow, I would be so grateful for the journey because it's just been a fantastic learning curve. And I never imagined to get this far. You know, I, I just, it, I, was, I thought it was great when it reached Mallorca, which is the next island to me. And now I, I've got users in 47 countries worldwide. So um, I, it, it's just fantastic what I've achieved 
with, you know, with very little knowledge of the tech world. So, you know, keep going and just just be proud of the little, um, the little, what's, sorry, I've, I've, I'm lost for words. Um, you know, every small step mm. makes it a big step in the end, you know? So just keep going, little steps, little by little. And if it's a good idea, it will grow and grow by itself. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely true. So, well, thank you very much, Joe. Um, so if, if you could please provide me with, you know, your, your website uh, or the link for your website or your social media, I will post that in the video and uh, so that, you know, people can look at this, this interview and, and also, you know, it would, it would be great if we could generate new users that way too. Um, so yeah, I mean, thank you very much for, for the opportunity to talk today and, um, you know, so please share those links with me and I'll, I'll put it in the description section. And if I, anyone watching this video has any questions for either Joe or for me, uh, just please comment on the, on the comment section and we'll, we'll answer that for you guys. Yeah. Do you want me to put the links in the chat now? Uh, sure. Yeah. Just, uh, send me those links on WhatsApp or in the chat and, uh, and uh, I'll post those. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you very okay. much. Joe. Have Bye a very good one. Bye. Take care.